I've already applied some Too Faced Born This Way foundation and some Maybelline Eraser Eye. Then on the inner corners of my eyes I'm applying some of this Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I don't tend to have dark circles but I do have a little bit of blueness just on this inner corner and the pinky peach colour from this corrector is going to counteract that blue. If you do suffer with dark circles under your eyes you can apply this to your skin first and then apply your concealer over the top. Next I'm going in with Becca's Soft Light Blurring Powder and I'm using Becca's Soft Kabuki Brush to apply this. You simply swirl the head of the brush in the pot and then dust this over the face where you want to set your foundation. This comes in a universal shade of Soft Peach. So it's to brighten up dull skin and counteract any ashy tones. Now although this isn't a highlighter in any sense of the word, it does have light reflecting pigments in it and this is what gives you that kind of blurred appearance to your skin but if you like a completely matte finish to your skin you may not like this. But it is very 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 subtle. These are the four new Zoeva Graphic Brow Pencils. Off camera I'm using Arsenic to fill in my brows and these are definitely my new favourite pencils. So they rival Anastasia Beverly Hills and my Diego Della Palma one which I love but these are only £7.50 compared to £15.50 for the ABH one. They've also brought out four matching brow gels to go with the pencils. And also they've brought out a brow spectrum palette and as you can see it contains all the necessary colours that you could need if you're a makeup artist for your kit. Along with that release is their matte eyeshadow palette which I'm going to be using today. You'll have to excuse my messy brows, I'm currently leaving them so I can film a brow grooming tutorial for you. So the first colour I'm using is called Eerily Empty. This is a medium brown shade with an orange undertone to it. And I'm using my small crease brush to work this colour through the socket. So we're going in a window wiper motion all the way through the socket from the very beginning to the outer edge. And this is the colour that we're going to be taking the highest. Even if you've got hooded eyes, you can still create this type of eyeshadow look. You're going to just be taking this colour above your hood and creating a false crease. And it doesn't have to be super defined because it's not a cut crease, it's just a soft shape. Next I'm going in with Cheap Bar. This is a medium to dark reddish brown. Using that same brush we're now going to trace our steps and intensify that first brown shade that we applied. With this one you can just work in small circular motions going backwards and forwards and you don't need to worry about taking the colour too high because we've already applied that first colour. If you find you need to blend the seam between the two shades a little bit more then use what's left on the bristles and work the brush upwards. The key here though is to use a light hand and obviously make sure you take your first colour which is your transition colour up high enough. This way we're going to create that nice gradient. Using that same brush you also want to make sure you run that underneath your lower lashes and make sure you connect that with the outer corner of your top lid and pull that colour outwards. You can then go in with a clean blending brush and soften all the outer edges. This is going to help to make your work look a lot more seamless and make sure everything blends beautifully. The next colour I'm using is called Lonely City and this eyeshadow is a plum shade and on a flat shader brush I'm applying this to the outer corner of the mobile eyelid and working that towards the centre. And then much like last week I'm applying this to the inner corner of the mobile eyelid and we're going to leave the centre blank. So I'm showing you the same techniques as last week but using different colours and tones and this way you're going to learn how to create two completely different eye looks using the same techniques. So using the tip of the brush I've worked that through the centre of the crease so the colours meet in the middle and now I'll go back in with my small crease brush and a very small amount of cheap bar to make sure everything blends seamlessly. I'm using some of that plum shade on the very tip of my flat shader brush and I'm working that underneath the lower lashes closer to the root. So as you can see we've started to frame the eyes. We're now going to go in with some pure white chromaline cream from MAC and on a concealer brush I'm applying this to the very centre of the eyelid. Then I'm going to use my ring finger to pat that into the skin. The heat from my finger is going to help to melt that product and it's going to help me to blend the seams. The reason I've chosen to use white over a concealer is because we're going to be using orange and I really want the orange to be quite vibrant. So if you place white underneath it, the orange is going to look more orangey. Whereas if you use a concealer, it definitely won't look as bright. So as you can see, I've layered this product a couple of times and I've used my finger each time to blend that in. Then to make sure we don't lose any of that beautiful plum shade, I'm reapplying that to the outer corner and the inner corner of the eyes and I'm feathering that towards the centre. And then as you can see we've got that beautiful gradient between the colours. So now I'm going in with the brightest shade in the palette which is called Through the Window. And this is a really intense warm orange shade. Using a clean flat shader brush I've packed the colour onto the bristles and now I'm patting that directly over the white cream eyeshadow. 
A lot of matte eyeshadows tend to be quite chalky, but the payoff of these is really lovely. Because we're applying it over white, I have laid it a couple of times to really build up that vibrancy and intensity. Next I'm taking my metallic Fairy Dust Pots by Pixie. These give a beautiful soft focus finish. I'm using the one at the very top, which is the lightest shade. And again, on the same flat shader brush, I'm going to press this directly over that orange that we've got on the centre of the eyelids. So this is creating a spotlight effect, which means we get that beautiful glow on the very centre of our mobile eyelid. This makes the lid look more rounded, but also a lot larger. And if you've got hooded eyes, you want to apply this to the very centre while you're looking directly in the mirror. Then close your eyes and fill in that area. Now I'm going to apply this purple eyeliner by Makeup Forever across the waterline. Initially when you apply it, it doesn't come out that vibrant, but when you apply a couple of layers, it's beautiful and it's really, really vivid and it stays put all day. I also like to push quite hard onto the skin so it works in between the lashes. Because it's sitting slightly off the waterline, it really catches the light and this is what gives it that super vibrant look when it's in your lashes. Now I'm taking this dark violet star liner by Natasha Denona and I'm only using the liquid side. These are actually meant to be used as a duo, so it's probably a little bit more wishy-washy than a generic liquid liner, but I applied a couple of layers of this to really build it up and it was lovely. I would have liked something that was probably a little bit more purple, but I actually didn't have anything to hand. But I think it works well with the contrast of the dark liner and the slightly more vivid purple on the waterline. I particularly love the brush that's attached to this and it's made creating that sharp point on the inner corner really easy. On a pencil brush I'm applying a small amount of that pixie dust on the inner corner of the eyes. Off camera I'm applying these Eskido lashes in Black Magic. To warm up the skin I'm using my Too Faced Chocolate Bronzer on my Zoeva 127 Luxe Sheer Cheek Brush. And I'm working it across the cheekbones. I'm not using it as a contour as such, I am using it as a bronzer. But we are defining the hollows of the cheeks as we sweep that across the cheekbone. I'm also adding a very small amount of that around my hairline and this is just going to warm up the entire face. You may notice that the lighting on the video is slightly different, it's because I'm using a different camera and it's not coordinating with my lighting at the minute and it's really really bugging me. So if any of you have got any experience with the GH4, send me a message. Next I'm using this blush by Natasha Denona and this is Sheer Nude and the brush I'm using is by Makeup Forever. I think the brush number is 152 but I will confirm that in the description bar for you. I didn't record the blush, I forgot to hit record, sorry. <laughs> so moving on to lips, I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's Iconic Nude Lip Liner. What I love about this is it's very neutral, so if you don't like something that's too pinky or too brown, then this is a great one. The lipstick I'm using is by Charlotte Tilbury, and this is in the shade Nude Kate, and this is a great one for bridal. I hope you guys love this warm Valentine's Day makeup look. It's really soft and really feminine and beautiful. If you like it, please give the tutorial a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, it's free to do so, so why not? If you missed my previous tutorials, you can click on these now and don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!